Well, it happened. My little experiment up there to kind of boost my dust collection has died. You know, now even if I turn on my sander, it doesn't do anything. If I come over here and I manually override this to on, nothing. It's done. So a quick recap, I made a video about a year ago about using this as basically kind of a dust collection booster. So all my small devices, you know, primarily sanders is what I'm worried about. You know, a big dust collector, big central dust collection, you know, it can suck a lot, but it can't suck very hard. So when it comes to having adequate airflow through small hoses like this and through small ports, it just doesn't do a very good job for that. For larger things like, you know, a six inch ducts or like four inch ducts to my table, so on my router table, it can have plenty of airflow, hundreds and hundreds of cubic feet per minute, but not very much suction pressure. So the most common solution for that is to like buy a little shop vac, put it next to your workbench. Um, but you know, this is kind of a, not the smallest space, but I didn't want something kicking around here. So I decided to basically kind of hack apart the cheapest shop vac I could find, which was one of those bucket head things that Home Depot sells that you put on a five gallon bucket. I hacked it apart and that way, you know, I would get plenty of good kind of suction through these small tubes. And then instead of having a whole separate, like second filter, second canister to empty out, this then just pumps the air into my large dust collection. That then goes to my central dust collector. But now that it's died, it's time to make version two. So after that original video came out about this little dust booster thing I made, somebody named VacMaster or something uh, left a comment that I thought was pretty helpful. And they said I should look for an old, what they call a direct air vacuum for my next iteration of this. And now that it's died, um, that's actually the path I chose to pursue. So I got on eBay and I bought this old motor and blower assembly um, out of a Royal Dirt Devil, it has a model number, says it's tested okay. And this is what I'm gonna be using to essentially make my next version of this. Uh, this thing was right about $40 after shipping and tax. So that's really not too much money to be out. Um, and I fired it up. And if anything, I have a fear that it might actually be a little too powerful for the application I need. I've heard some people on the internet say that if you have too much suction at your sander, it can lead to some, uh, just some kind of issues with the sanding because it's almost sucking the device down into the work. We'll see how that works out. Um, there's probably ways I can restrict the flow if that really happens, but yeah, just some initial tests with this just to make sure it really did still work. Seeing that the, this thing has a whole lot more oomph uh, than the previous version. So today's video is just gonna be all about retrofitting this thing uh, to basically replace the old unit and then we're just gonna take some uh, airflow or like air velocity measurements as well as pressure measurements um, and kind of compare that against uh, what this thing did and, and we'll see how this thing does. Now, so this dust booster, um, you know, if you're gonna make this yourself, it relies on you having uh, like a quality or some kind of central dust collection system. I've got this large three horsepower NIDA. It does a great job and it has a huge filter stack, which just makes me feel confident that that's a much better filter for small particulates than if you just buy a cheap shop vac that might just have a little bag or something is not really rated to all those really tiny, you know, like sub micron particles. And I like this system because by using this kind of automatic vacuum control box, essentially anytime I fire up a sander or any like two tools I have plugged into this, it will kick on this little unit and as a result it's just very automated when i'm working in the shop it kicks on when i want to sand and it turns off when i don't need it to if you are interested in making something similar to this i would kind of recommend you just go watch the first video it talks a little bit more about like what hoses i'm using and i use a lot of these lock line fittings and that will just provide a little more details about that so we won't cover that in too much detail right now as well if you do watch that first video one of the uh, original measurements that I took was to compare this against another video by I think a guy named Whitworks. Uh, and he used like a, one of those Festool extractors and I think a rigid shop vac and he kind of gets some measurements from those. So that's just an interesting comparison to see how the dust collection and the suction I'm getting compares to that stuff. So adapting this blower and motor assembly actually isn't too difficult. And I may have just gotten lucky with this one that I bought. You know, I had no ideas about what dimensions it was or anything when I purchased it. But really the three big things that you need to do is you need to get it wired up, then you need to figure out how to attach your intake and exhaust hoses, and then you actually gotta figure out how to attach it on the wall. For the wiring, I did manage to find an old wiring diagram for this uh, motor assembly. And basically all the wires that I really need to worry about are the white and the black, which is pretty common with AC wiring. You've got your hot and your neutral. 
the other wires coming off of this assembly were for I think like that floor brush um, and maybe a light, but I ended up just popping the cover off the top of this and I just end up pulling those wires out because I don't really need them. I'm not wiring a switch into my power cord um, because I am using that automated vacuum on off switch thingy. But um, if you are just plugging this straight into a wall, obviously you're gonna wanna use a switch. So it's not just on every time it's plugged into an outlet. As for the intake and exhaust hoses, on the intake side, I'm actually using this like PVC conduit fitting that I had lying around. It was almost the right size to slip over this uh, metal port, but I ended up just boring it out with the Forstner bit kind of crudely, and then it slipped over very nicely. And then the Rockler hose kit that I've been using, it has an adapter that can just kind of screw onto the threaded side of this adapter, and this is a very nice snug fit. In the end, I end up using a few screws and then some just uh, gasket material to make a nice airtight seal. And on the exhaust side, I'm just reusing the old exhaust hose that I used on the first version of this. Uh, the orange piece is a lock line nozzle that I end up cutting a little bit. And then with a heat gun, I can soften it up enough to slide over that um, exhaust port. And while it's still fairly malleable from uh, the heat, I end up using a hose clamp to kind of, you know, form it into shape and a nice tight seal there. And then for the mounting bracket, uh, this ended up being a lot easier than I expected. The blower that I bought, the uh, case on it, the metal part is just over five inches, just a couple hundredths over. So I just ended up using a five inch hole saw to cut a hole in some scrap plywood. And then using my spindle sander, um, I just quickly fine tuned it to get a nice kind of press fit. To attach it, I've got some of these metal wire clips that have been laying around for a while. So I just ended up using a few of those to screw this thing down firmly. And then I just screw that piece of plywood to a scrap piece of two by four I had and uh, the whole thing is attached and that actually went a lot smoother than I expected. So now uh, let's take some measurements, you know, some air velocity measurements and some uh, pressure or vacuum measurements and uh, see how this thing rips. So passively through here, we're getting, I, mean, I think if I adjust the nozzle right, I can get about one and a half, oh, 1.6. As I said in the other video, um, this is the stupid thing about this, I think, method is that the observation window is essentially bigger than the, you know, area that we're actually sucking through. So we can really kind of skew our results if we like. But uh, let's give it a run and let's power it up. So we'll manually just turn it on. It's going to be loud. And. So I just want to reiterate as you're watching me try to get these measurements that I do think this method is screwy and you can skew your results by as much as like 40% by just moving around the end of the hose. However, I just wanted to kind of keep consistent with that Whitworks video. And for comparison, the Festool unit that he's doing there, I think draws in the mid 12 meters per second and his rigid shop back is at about 10 meters per second. He also came up with the second video I just saw that actually takes some pressure readings and he's pulling, I think, about 70 to 80 inches of water column for the Festool unit and 40 for the shop vac. And we're gonna take those measurements in just a second. So that's the uh, speed measurement and then a pressure measurement. Damn, we're pushing over 70 inches of water column. That's, uh, that's sucking pretty good there. So that's kind of cool. All right. So, yeah, so as we just showed there, we're um, maybe a couple more meters per second higher than with the previous iteration, uh, which was, um, you know, went from about maybe 10, I think is what we had in the previous video, to about 11. I can force it all the way up to 13, but like, you know, let's just say 12, so 20% improvement. But the actual inches of water column, you know, we've gone from, you know, mid 40s to just over 70s. So that's pretty huge improvement there. So anyways, um, I'm gonna stand with this for a couple weeks. And if you don't see another video about this, that means it's working. And that means that it's not sucking so hard uh, that it's causing any issues. All right, maybe the last thing I'd like to talk about is how much power this thing's consuming. Now, when it was just kind of freewheeling with no resistance, um, you know, we're about 11 amps, which was a lot higher than I expected. So we're gonna use one of these Klein meters um, whatever it shows on the screen is times 10. It's good to keep in mind. But if we work in on this thing, um, get our clamp meter. 
So now if we power on the vacuum, we should see how much power it's drawing. So we'll turn this thing on manually. Yikes. Okay, so we are pulling um, about nine amps. That's quite a bit higher than I had hoped. Um, in a bench test, I was down to about seven and a half with some other constrictions on this. So hopefully, um, yeah. Hey, let's do another quick test. Let's actually move this over. And then we'll actually put it before this whole gizmo and then let's plug that in with the sander and see what we're at all right we're not gonna be able to see that all right so we're on auto mode we're gonna turn on our sander oh we have some residual drop period just run that thing that's cool Okay, so it looks like we're pulling about 13 amps combined. Uh, if we really bog down the sander, then for just like a quick spike, we can maybe push that to about 15 amps. But it looks like we're drawing about 13 amps. Um, that is pretty high, especially if you've got other things plugged into a single outlet. Um, all my outlets here in the shop are 20 amp outlets, but something to keep in mind, uh, depending on what you got going on in your shop. Anyways, time will tell whether that power draw or just the amount of suction this thing producing is actually a problem. Well, thank you so much for watching. You know, I think that this is just like a much uh, cleaner, less obtrusive solution to have good like uh, dust collection right at the tool compared to having a big shop vac or like you know, investing in like a whole separate dust collector. Uh, so hopefully you learned something and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you, bye.